I'm gonna keep preaching. Oh, I'm gonna make sure. Yeah, you for sure. Talking to me this whole time. Yeah, so for sure. Have the oh, I'm gonna talk to, to, to people. I'm not just PA. Yeah, for hurting sure. Hurting all these people. I'm not hurting anybody. The way that they're living their I'm lives not... is false. And then you come out here. Oh, you're spitting on me, this, sir. This is a good faith sir, argument. Uh, Bro, you... this is not a good Yo, faith you're, argument. You're spitting on me. Yeah, because I'm furious. Yeah. I want to explain why I'm yelling. I'm yelling because you came to a gay pride for organization. For sure. A gay pride event. I know where I'm at. a large PA system. Yeah. The only possible reason to do that is to share is the gospel. Or no. Yes, no, sir. Yep. Yeah, just because you have a cross on you, that doesn't mean you got peace with God, no, sir. No, no. The you fact that have, I was you ordained have, by the Presbytery of Pittsburgh. That's fine. Please, Listen, sir, God. you don't believe in God. You don't. How you dare may, you? It's how not how dare, dare you. you. It's how, how you live. It's how you're you. walking, sir. No. Look how, how you walk. You. Look how you're acting. How dare you reproach at, another believer not yes. knowing them? You're not you don't a believer. know nothing about me, bro. You're not a believer. You're not in relationship you're with not me. A, right, you're, you're right. Not a family member you're not a to believer. me. You're just telling me I'm not because a believer. Because the Bible says, guess what? If you keep you are a sin, false prophet. You keep spit on me, sir. I do it intentionally because I am content to extort you. God has, so they may be without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God. No one was thankful because they became futile in their thoughts. And their foolishness and the foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools. Did you see You see how you sat down? It's not because of me, but that's God's spirit because he's so longer for you. God wants to give you grace. Wow, guys. This is what happens when you reject the word of God and you seek after your vain, vile pleasures. God will give you up to a reprobate mind if you choose not to seek after the things of God. And I feel so bad for this man because actually he's going down the path of the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, which is rejecting the gift of salvation until he dies. This is very, very sad because he's a proclaimed pastor. This liberal, quote-unquote, pastor should not be in leadership. And unfortunately, many churches to this day have accepted homosexuality, the alphabet community, and being a PDF file. This is not of God. It's, it's, it's perverse and it's disgusting. And this man of God right here, I give him a lot of respect because he's rebuking the alphabet community in their festivals. That takes a lot of courage. That takes a lot of boldness in Christ to be able to do, guys. And not a lot of people are doing it. It's very easy for people to say, oh, you shouldn't share the gospel this way or you shouldn't share the gospel that way. You're being hateful and bigoted. Well, where, where are you? Are you sharing the gospel? Where are you sharing the gospel? It's like me. I do my videos and people are like, oh, why don't you go in person? Or why don't you uh, text people privately? Why do you have to make these big videos? Well, you don't have to watch my videos, first of all. And second of all, where are you sharing the gospel? People are so quick to tell you, oh, don't share the gospel like this or don't share the gospel like that. But what are you doing for the Lord? Are you doing the Lord's work? It's, it's very sad and unfortunate, guys. Um, but I do want to give you guys a gift since it is, you know, uh, Pride Month. I do want to talk about this stuff. Whenever we look at the Book of Romans, and I do want to make my stance very clear on the alphabet community, PDF files, and anything of, of, along those lines, I want to make it very, very clear what my stance is as a born-again Christian. And my stance is really what the Word of God says, because I feel like when many people read the Bible, as they read it with a mindset and mentality of changing the Word of God instead of letting the Word of God change them. You have to let the word of God change you. If you don't have a hum humble, contrite spirit that's open to allowing the, the Holy Spirit to come inside of you, to allowing God to completely transform you through Jesus Christ, then you're always going to be arrogant and prideful. And God resists the prideful, as it says in the book of Proverbs. So we must truly, openly seek Jesus Christ and seek the truth. We cannot go into reading the word of God with a prideful heart or God will not work with us. So as we read the book of Romans and Romans chapter one, the very first chapter from verses 22 to 25, guys, it states professing themselves to be wise. They became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, 
who change the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. So in the context of this chapter, it's showing how, how, how men were defiled and vile and they, and they seek that to the things of this world and not the things of God. And so this isn't just the case in idolatry. This can also be the case of adultery and fornication. This can be in the case of even smoking. Is so a lot of people. What happens is is they start with baby steps. People aren't just becoming homo uh, homosexual overnight. People aren't PDF files overnight. People aren't a part of the alphabet community overnight. There's baby steps. First, it starts with a little video when you're six. You start watching these uh, perverted videos at night. Maybe it starts because uh, your uncle uh, touched you in a way where he wasn't supposed to. It's, it's these little baby steps that gradually progress as you get older, and they become these very perverse, vile, ungodly, sinful lifestyles. It's baby steps, and that's what people don't realize. It's a progression. And that's the thing is whenever your heart is far from God, you don't realize it, but then it slowly develops into something worse. It's like a virus, a virus. If you don't treat it, a cancer, if you don't treat it in your body, whenever it's fresh, whenever it's new, it can grow worse and it can overtake your whole body until you're dead. And it's the same thing with sin. It can overtake your whole body, soul, spirit, and your mind until you're spiritually dead and then resulting to potentially becoming physically dead. A lot of people don't know that, but when it comes to sin, if you sin too long without Jesus Christ, it can actually lead to physical death. And we see this multiple times within the scriptures, within the word of God. But then guys, I have even more evidence for my claims. I'm going to provide evidence within the Old and New Testament, because if you speak with people who are progressive Christians, they'll say, oh, well, I only care about the New Testament. Or some will say, I only care about the Old Testament. OK, well, I'll go ahead and provide evidence in both the Old and New Testament. So whenever we look at Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 to 23, it says, Be aware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot be for bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire, which is a.k.a. hell, right? Wherefore, by the fruits ye shall know them. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name have done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye worker, ye that work iniquity. So scripture makes it very clear, if you don't follow the will of God, if you're not truly a born-again Christian, he will say, depart from me, I never knew you, ye that work iniquity. And so this applies to all of these Methodist or Baptist churches, and there's so many other denominations that support homosexuality and PDF files and alphabet community nowadays. It's very unfortunate, but this has crept into the church today, and people are too progressive and people are too politically correct to even talk about these things, especially during Pride Month. And this is something that needs to be talked about because it's actually very anti-Christ. Right. However, whenever we look at the book of Matthew, we can actually see further in the word of God what God truly does despise, what is considered evil in the word of God. Right. Because that verse specifically doesn't speak of the alphabet community, but it does say if you commit evil, that goes against God. So let's continue reading scripture and let's find out what is considered evil according to God's word. So according to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 11, it says, Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Whoa, who are these people? So let's see what it says. It states, Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye were washed, ye were sanctified, ye were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of God.
So scripture lets us know that actually some of us were homosexual. Some of us were adulterers. Some of us were liars. Some of us were thieves. A lot of us were a lot of these sinful lifestyles before we became transformed in Christ Jesus through the renewing of the mind and the soul through the Holy Spirit. So before we became born again Christians, we were all just like you guys. We were all just like the world. But Jesus Christ teaches us that we can be redeemed through him alone and that it doesn't matter if you're gay. It doesn't matter if you're a thief. It doesn't matter if you're a prostitute. It doesn't matter if you're a liar, if you're a murderer, whatever you are. God says that he can redeem you. There's no sin that is too great for God to be able to redeem. Redemption is for anybody who is still breathing and living. And as long as you're still living and breathing, there's room for God to redeem you. Don't ever let the enemy lie to you and tell you that you're too far to be able to be changed from God. Because this is what Satan wants you to believe. It's a deceitful tactic he uses, and many people believe it. And this is why many people, their hearts are far from God. They're hardened from God, and they don't believe there's a chance for them to have salvation. But this is far from the truth, guys. Salvation is for anybody who is breathing. It doesn't matter what you've done as long as you truly repent and believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is that he died on the cross and three days after resurrected for the forgiveness of our sins. So that if we just believe in him as God, we shall be saved. However, whenever we look at Matthew, it says this people draweth nigh unto me with their mouths and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain, they do worship me, teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. So as we can see, scripture tells us that there's many people who proclaim to know God, but their hearts are far from him. They can honor God with their lips. They can fast and appear holy, but their hearts are far from God. And so many, many, many Christians, quote unquote, and many other religious people, quote unquote, actually do this multiple times. They honor God with their lips, but their hearts are far from him. So it's very important for us to allow the word of God to change us and not the other way around. Because the second we allow the word of God to be changed because of our sinful desires, that's the second we lost the point of Jesus Christ. And so just to show the evidence that scripture also does go against homosexuality and the alphabet community in the Old Testament, I'll actually show you another verse. Leviticus 20.13, if a man lieth with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. And to furthermore prove my point, in Genesis chapter 2, I'm not going to read the whole chapter, but basically it tells us that Adam needed a helper. It is not good for man to be alone. This is why he created woman. He created woman, which came out of man, out of his ribs. He created a woman to be complement a man. That's the reason why men today have wives. It's because that's how God intended it to be. Adam and Eve and not Adam and Steve. Adam and Steve is not a biblical concept. But furthermore, in the book of Romans, it gets very interesting because it says, Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. But then it furthermore says, for this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their woman did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burn in their own lusts one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meant. So if you don't know what that means, it basically means men were receiving things in their bodies that they're not supposed to. I don't think I have to really describe what that verse is trying to imply or what it is actually stating. Right. But scripture makes it very clear that men are not supposed to sleep with men. And no, this is not talking about PDF files. And the reason why we know that is because when you actually look at the Greek word, it's saying men with men, showing that it's two men of a mature age, of a legal age for them to be together. So it shows that it's actually implying homosexuality and not being a PDF file. So does scripture go against being a PDF file? Absolutely. Scripture does not support that. 
But does scripture also go against being a part of the LGBT community? Absolutely. It goes against all sexually immoral, perverse, sinful lifestyles. So we must keep that in mind. Let the word of God transform us, not the other way around. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope that it was edifying. If it was edifying for you, please subscribe, turn on notifications, smash that like button. Please share it with someone that you think that can learn from this and comment your opinions below. And I hope you guys enjoy.